goodness and your mercy we thank you for this day that you have given to us father we ask right now that you would move us out of the way that you would get the glory even in this service we thank you god for the praises that have gone up before you we ask god that you will take delight in our praise and right now in the name of jesus send your anointing god the anointing that makes preaching easy and father we thank you right now for destroying every yoke and everything that would come up against us god we thank you that you've given us the victory once more and again Again. Father, we thank you for your healing power because there's nothing like you. We enter into your presence, God, and we ask right now, oh God, that you would pour your strong hand over us. Oh God, let your anointing destroy every yoke. Father, we thank you today for your goodness and your mercy. Father, we bless your name today. right now in the name of Jesus. Oh God, that you would meet every need in this house. God, you know where we came from. You know what we had on our hearts before we got here. And God, we thank you. Oh God, we thank you for making us whole. We thank you, God, for making us complete in you. Oh, we thank you right now for the spirit of the living God. Oh, fall fresh on us today. And we'll forever give you praise. We'll forever give you glory. Oh, because you're the only wise God. Be both majesty, dominion, and power. We pray in the name of Jesus. Oh, my dear Messiah, that name that is above every other name. Oh, that name that is, can save us. That name that can heal us. Oh, God, and we thank you in Jesus' name. We love you and we glorify you. Come on, let's just put our hands together. And give God some praise for he's a wonderful Savior. Oh, come on, praise him for his excellent greatness. Praise him according to his mercy. Praise him for his kindness. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Glory to your name. Jesus. Glory to God. I just want you to reach over and grab someone by the hand and just say, neighbor, he sent his word and healed all my diseases. He healed us. He healed us in our minds. He healed us in our bodies. He healed us in relationships. Oh my God. Hallelujah. The healer is here. Whatever you want, you can get it on today. Amen. God is a good God. Thank you, Jesus. And you got to understand that the enemy does not want to see you get a breakthrough. The enemy does not want to see you reach your full potential because the enemy knows that you have a purpose and you have a destiny. And if you ever get to that point of destiny and purpose, what will happen is the enemy has lost the battle. So what he tries to do is he tries to keep us discouraged. He tries to keep us frustrated. He tries to get you busted and disgusted so that you will give up along the way. But I want to encourage you on this morning. The Bible says many are the afflictions of the righteous. That word righteous is not does not mean perfect because we understand that none of us are perfect but we're striving for perfection that word righteous means a continuation of doing the right thing when you are righteous that means I'm continuing to do the right thing I may make a mistake I may fall uh, and you that feel that you don't make mistakes you need to go to Romans chapter number 3 verse 23 the Bible says all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God so from the biggest to the littlest from the great to the neat least of us to the title if you have one or if you don't have a title all of us have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God 
One scripture lets us know that all of our righteousness is as filthy rags before the Lord. So no one can feel like they've arrived. We have to understand that we're all on the same page. I need God. You need God. We all need God. Amen. Glory to God. And one week without prayer will make anybody weak. Glory to God. I thank you, Jesus. Ah, so the Bible tells us here, many are the afflictions of the righteous. But we have to understand uh, that in this scripture, it assures us that in spite of the afflictions, there is going to be totally 100% deliverance out of every one of these trials. That should give you hope right there, that no matter what I go through, no matter how horrible it may look, no matter how painful it may be, God has already made a way of escape for you and I. The, the problem is we've got to tap in to realize the path that God has for our lives. We have to know that in the name of Jesus, as God's servants, we uh, cannot allow the enemy to use our circumstances uh, to bring doubt because we have to understand that when you doubt God, then you're accusing God of being a liar. Well, what are you saying? In Hebrews chapter number 11, Hebrews chapter number 11 and verse number 1, the Bible says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. By it, the elders obtained a good report. And if you keep on reading in Hebrews and you go down to that sixth verse, it says, he that cometh to God must first believe that he is and that he is a rewarder to them that diligently seek him. Understand, my friend, that the enemy comes to bring doubt into your life so that when you are in your circumstances, when you are in your trials, you will begin to doubt that God is on your side. The enemy wants to get you to the place where he can rock your faith. I heard the woman as she was talking about her testimony and how the devil tried to rock her. Uh, but you have to understand that he's on his job. That's what he's supposed to do. He's supposed to rock you. He's supposed to try and get you off course because his job description is listed in John chapter number 10. The Bible tells us in John 10, 10, the thief cometh but to kill, to steal, and to destroy. But if you look in that same scripture, there's a comma there and it says, but I've come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. So no matter what the enemy brings your way, you have to know that God's power is greater than any circumstance that you would go under. You have to understand, oh, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Every tongue that shall rise up against me, me. God said in that day I will condemn it. Know that the weapon is going to form. That's why you have trials and tribulations in your life. That's why things happen in our homes. That's why things happen in our children. It would not be, the enemy would not be on his job if he didn't try to get you. And the reason he's trying to get you is because of the anointing that's housed on the inside of you. Don't you know that it's the anointing that destroys every yoke? Don't you know that you are, my God, a threat to the enemy? The enemy is afraid of what you might find out about yourself. Hallelujah. The enemy wants to keep you depressed. He wants to keep you looking down. Because if he can keep you looking down, then you'll never realize your potential. But I want you to look at somebody real quick and affirm in them and say, there's power in your praise. There's power in you. There's power in you. You don't even realize it. Glory to God. But your steps are ordered by the Lord. The Bible says the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. And he delights in their way. Glory to God. I'm just talking to you. So the Bible says here, glory to God, many are the afflictions of the righteous but the Lord delivereth him out of them all we have to understand that we have power in Jesus the Bible tells us in Philippians chapter number 2 verse number 10 it says that at the name of Jesus 
Every knee shall bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth and that every tongue should confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of the of God the Father. Now let me just slow down for a minute and unpack this just for a moment. At the name of Jesus, every knee, tap your knee, I know your knee might be hurt, but every knee has got to bow. Of things in heaven, that's where God dwells. Of things on earth, that's where we dwell. And on things under the earth. That's a powerful name. Under the earth, we know, is where Satan and his cohorts and the demons, they dwell under the earth. So he included everything in all-inclusive. In other words, everything was included to give him the authority at his name. And how many of you have computers? Computers, computers, you have computers. Well, in your computer, sometimes you set up what you would call a password yeah. in order to break into the computer because you don't want anybody to get your material or whatever the situation is or whatever you're hiding on your computer you don't want nobody to tap into your stuff so you have a password well God has given us the password for every situation in our lives if you want to unlock those things that seem to be impossible in your life look at Philippians chapter number 2 and verse number 10 it says at the name of Jesus the password is Jesus. Jesus. 